Welcome back to the lab folks. So today we got in a model KM601S smart digital multimeter from Kaiweets. They sent that into the channel uh, for me to have a look at. Okay, comes in a nice case. That's always nice. I think the last Kaiweets I got came in a nice case as well. So okay, let's have a look inside it. All right, there's the meter itself. We're going to be using these probes for the test, so let's open them up. They're pretty standard fare. There's, there's, a, there's nothing particularly wrong with them at all. Maximum 10 amps. They don't have any cat rating on them. The wire here is for 2,000 volts. It's a 20 gauge wire. So they got these little caps on them too, which is also fairly standard stuff. And what else do we put in here? They put in a USB charging cable. And they put in a temperature probe. Of your standard uh, type K thermocouple. The spacing on here doesn't look great and it's not. It's really quite odd because my, my other Kaiweets meters all have a uh, standard spacing on them. And do we take it apart first? Fuses here had to be removed to get the case off it. Here's your input protection here. You got a PTC there. We got some protection diodes up here. Yeah, pretty standard fare. It's a very nicely laid out board. It seems to be pretty good separation on the voltage side. And here you can see the, the double contacts here for the probe detection. Battery is in a separate compartment here. So you can get directly into the fuses. It's got two nice ceramic fuses in there. I don't see any markings on them. These are 250 volt fuses. Six languages. Starting off with English, when measuring AC voltage, the frequency will be displayed, and when measuring other settings, the ambient temperature will be displayed on the screen. That's nice, it has a dual display on it. When measuring resistance, if the resistance value is less than 50 ohms, the meter will beep, so it'll assume that it, you're measuring continuity, so the continuity beeper will come on. And the minimum measurable voltage in smart mode is 0.5 volts in AC and 0.8 volts in DC, and that's pretty typical. 10,000 counts. I should be able to use this that we checked out the other day. If you didn't see me checking this out, I'll leave a link to it up there. This checked out really, really well. So I'm going to use this to check out the precision of the meter. It should be plenty good for 10,000 counts. DC voltage 0.5% plus 3 counts. AC voltage 0.8% plus 3 counts. Current uh, AC DC current 0.8% plus 3 counts. And the high scale, the 10 amp scale. 1.2% plus 3 counts, capacitance 4% plus 3 counts, and on the bigger capacitors 5% plus 5 counts, and resistance 1% plus 5 counts, and then on the highest range 2% plus 10 counts. And it's overload protected in most of these modes up to 250 volts. So I'm not going to check that actually. Frequency 1% plus 3 counts, 1% plus 3 counts, temperature range plus or minus 3 degrees C, 1% or plus or minus 2 degrees C. I'll take that with a grain of salt. There we go. That's a pretty nice big display. Okay, so we're in auto mode. So in auto mode you can do volts, ohms, and continuity. So let's check out that minimum voltage they were talking about there. How long does it take? Oh, that's good. That's fast. Let me bring this down below. They said what below 0.8 volts, it won't recognize it. So let's go down to 0.7 volts, and then we'll plug this in. No, it's it's doing it. It's doing better than the, they've advertised. Let's go down to 0.6 volts. Okay, it won't at 0.6 volts, but at 0.7 volts it kicks in. All right, that's good. Okay, before we get started, I just want to see how quickly it recognizes a short circuit in auto mode. I think it's about, what, about half a second? Let's go right to continuity mode and see how long it takes. That's a bit slow. Let's go back to auto mode and we'll check these resistors here. So this is a 10 ohm resistor, so this should also cause it to beep because it's less than 50 ohms. That's within accuracy. Let's go down here to the 100 ohm resistor. Perfect. 
1000 ohms absolutely perfect it's really quick in measuring either voltage or ohms in auto mode but it's not so quick in determining continuity which 100k ohms okay yeah that's good let's uh let's try it up now in capacitance and it's not showing anything up i wonder if it'll even go down to 100 picofarads so this is 105 picofarads no it can't detect anything that low one nanofarad that's perfect there, but it can't get the 100 picofarads here. It's coming up as 50. 10 nanofarads, that's fine. 104 nanofarads, that's right on. One microfarad, that's good. That's good too. This one here is 10 microfarads. Take a little while for that. It's fine. It's reading a little bit high there, but I think it's within their stated accuracy. It's uh, on here with the Shockey diode up here. That's fine. Silicon diode, that's good. Red LED, that's wonderful. That's good too. It's using very little current. It's... Let me see what kind of voltage it's used. 3.4 volts, that's good. That's uh, fairly typical these days. If I go over here to amps. Okay, it's coming up here got red there so if I move this over will it tell me yeah so it does it does actually have probe detect so if, let's say if I'm over here on amps if I go back to volts yeah it won't even go off amps so it's not even going to let you move from here and it, it detects the range of amps and won't let you get off it so that that's really good. That's a very handy feature. Let's measure some voltages. I'm going to measure the voltages along with this So I'm going to have them both plugged in and we'll see if they agree. Well, they're both reading pretty much the same thing Definitely within the precision of this. So let's bring that down a little bit Okay, they're a little bit off there at the three millivolt range. It's still within the number of counts So yeah, they're agreeing well within the accuracy It's right on actually 7 volts, 17 volts, 32 volts, right on. There's no problem at all with accuracy. Let's try some AC volts. Okay, let's look at some millivolts here. AC, so we'll get that into AC. That's an AC. So I have 10 millivolts at 60 hertz going in, and they're both agreeing on the frequency, they're both agreeing on the voltages. Let's see if we go down. 2 millivolts. They can't measure the frequency anymore. So let's see, where, the, where does the frequency come back in at? Okay, this comes in at 9 millivolts. 10 millivolts. So 10 millivolts and up, it'll give you the frequency. Let's bring it up to 100 millivolts here. Let's go over now to the volt scale. Okay, we've got 1 volt RMS going in. Okay, let's try them out on the mains. Perfect agreement there. 236, so they're in perfect agreement there. I just wanna see what frequency I can get this one up to here. Okay, five kilohertz, and it's giving us a 49.4% duty cycle. I'm putting, right now, I'm putting a sine wave into it. Let's go up to 100 kilohertz. No problem there. Let's go up to 1 megahertz. Goes to 10. Do 20. Okay, we've got some uh, DC current going on here. 0 0.026 milliamps, 0 0.026 milliamps. 1.59, 1.58 there, that's good. 68 milliamps. 533 versus 531. Got approximately one amp there. Bring it up to three amps. Yeah, they're fine. Everything's working fine. They're very, very close agreement. I can find nothing wrong with the accuracy on this. It's, it's plenty good. I guess we could check out uh, the NCV in live. Okay, we got a live power bar here. Let's see if we can pick up with the non-contact here. Yeah, that's working. Let's try the live function here. 
that is a single probe test and it should be able to tell the difference between uh, ground, neutral, and live. Yeah, so that's the hot. Yeah, it's not picking up anything there. It's not picking up anything there. So that works too. One thing I have to check out is the flashlight. Uh, there we go. Might be handy for something. Working in the dark. It does have a rel mode, although we didn't test that out, but you all know how that works. It's got a min-max function. It's got everything you need, everything you need, and it works very well. For $45 US, you can get it on Amazon around about that. I think it's an excellent choice. I, I really do like the probe detection. That's nice to see that. I'm, I'd like to see more meters put that in there. And I, yeah, I can't say anything bad about it. I mean, we didn't find anything wrong with it. It didn't do anything it wasn't supposed to do. As far as a, a, a hobbyist meter goes, it's excellent. It, it far exceeds some of its specifications and it, it meets all the other ones quite well. I think it's great value for 45 bucks. I can recommend it. All right, folks, hope you got something out of this. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.